All right, guys, um, post edit code things here. This is what the final product of the auto depth of field system will look like. So as you can see, we are looking at this block right here. So everything behind it is blurred. Um, same thing on this side. It works with any object in your game, but obviously in this example map, you just have blocks right now. So that's like the main thing that you can see. But yeah, let's get on to this tutorial. All right, you guys, code things here. Um, and today we're going to be adding a depth of field system to our pre-existing uh, realistic character. So this should be a shorter tutorial. Um, the depth of field component that I make the function isn't too elaborate, but it does look very realistic. So um, let's get into it. So let's go into our blueprint um, first person character and we're going to be making a new function again to handle this. So let's make a function and let's call it um, just like our other initialize head bob, it's called initialize depth of field or DOF if you want to do it shorter. So with this, we're going to have to do a couple different things. The first thing though, we're going to want to make a line trace by channel, but in order to do this, we need a start and an end. So let's make a line trace by channel. And right here, as you can see, we're going to need to start and an end. So we're going to need to get the first person camera. And off of this, we're going to need to get the world location. Then let's fix this up. Then we're going to put that right into start. And then we're going to need to get the forward vector from the character or for the character camera. Forward vector. We're going to want to go 10,000 in front. So we're going to want to multiply by 10,000. And let's make this instead of a vector, make it an integer. Or you could do a float, I guess, if you want to, too. I'll make it a float for this case. So let's make it a float and let's do 10,000. One, two, three. All right, now this is multiplying the forward vector by 10,000 in order to get an accurate endpoint for our uh, line trace by channel. So again, let's clean this up just a little bit. And then we're gonna have to basically add this plus the get world location to the endpoint. So let's actually clean this up since adding is, yeah. Okay, so now it looks a little bit better. Now, after this, we're going to want to get the out hit and we're going to want to break it. So break, get results. Let's lower this. All right. And we're also going to want to go off of this return value and make a branch because we're going to want to check some things. All right. So out of this break hit result, we're going to want to get the location and we're going to want to subtract and I'm just going to kind of code this first and then I'll, I'll explain what everything means, but I'm trying to go and uh, explain it while I go along, but we're going to want to, um, subtract the get world location of the first person camera. And we're going to, we're going to want to get the vector length of this. Oh, let's make this straight if we can. We'll clean that up. And then off of this value, this value is actually really important. This is the focus location. So we're gonna wanna grab this, promote this to a variable and let's call it up here, make sure it's a float and let's call it focus location. We're gonna wanna put that into true. So basically if it hits, if, it, if there is a line trace by channel, then it will do these calculations and get the vector length and then figure out if the focus location is there or not. And off of that focus location, we're going to want to grab the first person camera and actually set some post processing settings. Um, there we go. And then we're going to want to go into here. And we're going to want to make post processing settings. And on the right, we're going to want to look for aperture or the F stop. Aperture F stop. We're gonna want to get the maximum aperture, which is here, and then we're gonna want to grab the uh, focal distance, which we just created, as you see right here. So we'll grab this, get, and plug that in right there. Um, the values that I like to use for the aperture is one, and then for the maximum, I like to use eleven. Um, obviously you can adjust these and mess with these as you would like um, to make this more accurate for you. And so now let's clean up this code a little bit and also go over it. So 
Um, originally, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a line trace. So that's what we're doing um, right here. We're creating a line trace by channel. But in order to do that, we need to get a start and an end point. So the start point that we're going to get is just to uh, get world location from the camera um, because that's where you're basically starting your looking um, from. And then you want to get the forward vector and multiply that by 10,000 um, and then add the get world location in order to get the end point. Basically, that's just where the the line ends. You want to just make sure that you have ample space in order for it to end at a certain spot. Um, if you want to make this longer, that would be the dependent of where your depth of field like um, actually sees from. So like, for example, if you were standing right here, your depth of field would be right here. But if you were standing back here, it would still make this... Um, the the item in focus if you wanted to from to be that far away but that would all be dependent on how far you made this multiplication um and then after this we're going to get the out hit and we're going to break hit result um because we need to get the location of this hit um once we get the location of this hit um we need to make sure we set up a branch because if there actually is a line trace by channel if there actually is a hit then we want to set the focus location. But if there is not, we don't want to do anything because that's like if we're just walking around right here, there's no hit result. So we're not going to actually make a, a focus location variable because there is no focus location. Now we're going to do these calculations in order to get the focus location. And then once we do that, we want to go off of the first person camera and set the post-processing settings to make sure that there is a depth of field in place, um, utilizing the variable we just created. So now, with this function created, we will go into our event graph and actually we can make this look a little bit better. So a couple of things that we're going to want to do in the um, in our event graph is that we're going to want to clean up our begin play. Our begin play is really important. So let's event begin play instead of input action mapping. And let's actually grab all of these nodes and let's right click and press um, collapse collapse nodes. And we'll actually, instead of making this whole thing just for adding input mapping, we'll just call this add input mapping, um, which is a pretty useful tool. It makes it like kind of like a function um, and just hides all of it. And so let's do this and let's drag that to output so that we can utilize output pins after. Let's go right back into our event graph. And now we're going to set up the depth of field. So off of the begin play, we wanna make sure that we have a set timer by function name. And you want to call what we called the function. So before we didn't, let's actually set up the custom event because I forgot we have to set up the custom event. So right near our other custom event, let's set up the custom event for this one. So here's the custom event. We're going to add an auto DOF. And off of this, we're going to drag to our initialize, uh, initialize depth of field, oops depth of field, make sure these are both straight. And then we can comment these real quick. That is the sprinting functionality. And then let's just fix this up so it's aligned. Great. So now we have all that. And then we want to make sure we call this. And so we called it right here, auto DOF. So we will call uh, the custom event auto DOF. And we'll, we're gonna wanna do it every 0.2 seconds. You can change that, but I found that's pretty um, a pretty good time to do it, which don't, it doesn't make your game too inefficient. We're gonna loop this so that it always checks to see. And as you can see now, if we go into play and we walk up to this corner, it will automatically detect that this is in focus. And as you can see, everything on that right side becomes blurred and it's a pretty good system. Um, it'll do it on every side. Um, if you're looking from this way, um, whatever, once you do crouching, obviously like these blocks might show it and then stuff like that, but that's the depth of field system now. And I hope you guys enjoyed. This was um, a pretty short tutorial. Um, and I'm going to be making more tutorials on this character in the future. So yeah, give me um, comments if you guys have any other things you want me to add to this character. But yeah, thank you for watching.